Hello guys, today we will be getting back into the Call of Duty World at War custom zombie mapping tutorial series, uh, the long-awaited fifth video from the fourth video, which uh, when we were creating this beautiful room right here where we left off. Um, your map is obviously going to look a little bit different than mine because mine is just for tutorial purposes and yours is probably a functional map that you want to create. Uh, that or a map you're experimenting with to get used to Radiant, which is fine as well. Uh, that's what I did on my first map. So here's our room, and today we'll be getting into creating new rooms on top of this room. Now this is a very basic concept, uh, so it should be a shorter video than the usual videos because it's just applying um, a technique uh, that you will get used to, don't worry about it. But before we actually get into the video, I'd like to just touch on something really quick. Is that I've realized that I've always, you know, avoided social media. I haven't really been one for Twitter or Facebook, but I think it would be much better for... Um, communicating with you guys for discussion on social media, right? And I, it's also automatically posted to social media when I post a video. So I'm thinking of setting up a Facebook and Twitter platform just for my YouTube channel, and that way we can all discuss on those pages and social media, and it's much easier than the comment section because the comment section is just a clutter of things. And Sometimes I don't see your comments because YouTube is weird. So the YouTube comment section is still great, you know, for questions or whatever, but for discussions and stuff like that, and for, uh, if you guys want to see my videos right when they're uploaded, you can go ahead and, uh, check out my Facebook page and Twitter page in the description below that I've just set up, and, uh, hopefully we can get that going. With that aside, we can go ahead and get back into the tutorial. So, here is our room, and we're going to go ahead and create another room. I'm going to create my room up here, uh, actually, yeah, right there. So here's our wall, right? Now, one way that I used to do in my old series and that I used to do um, all the time myself was I would just uh, resize this brush, copy the brush, paste the brush, retexture it. That's a lot of work. <laughs> you know, it's a lot more work than you have to be doing. So what we're going to be using is something called the cutting tool, which makes our lives much easier. And the cutting tool is very efficient in the editor. So to use the cutting tool, all we need to do is select the brush like we just had here. I'm going to scroll in a little bit here. We're going to hit the X shortcut. When you do so, you'll see up here in the toolbar that your uh, there's going to be a little symbol, you know, with like a triangle with three points and lines connecting them, uh, kind of like a geometry symbol um, up in your IDE, and it's now been selected when we hit X. This is called the clipper tool. Uh, when you hit X, this is a shortcut for it. I call it the cutter tool. Many people call it different things. Clipper, cutter, whatever, it's the same thing. Now what we're going to do is what this allows us to do is cut brushes. And we can cut brushes off or we can split brushes. And what we're going to be doing is splitting brushes. So we're going to split this into two different brushes. Well, how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to click on one point and click right here. And as you can see, it has cut our wall. You can do many other interesting things with the cutting tool as well. You can go ahead and hit X and then hit uh, click here. And then if you click over here, you'll create a um, diagonal. Okay, hold on. That, that's really weird. Hold on. I'm going to see what's going on here. Ah, there we go. See, that's that's what it is. So you can create a, a diagonal or whatever shape you want with the cutting tool. See how I cut off that so it makes like a slant on the wall, which can be kind of cool with map designs, but we're not going to get that sophisticated with it today. So we're just going to go ahead and go escape, um, hit X again, and we're just going to make a straight line. Okay, so we're just going to click here, we're going to click here, and that'll make that. Now, what we're going to be doing is splitting brushes, not cutting the brush off. So if we go ahead, if we hit enter, we're just going to cut the brush off. But if we go ahead and cut it again and hit shift enter, it'll split it into two separate brushes. It'll keep both the brushes, but it'll split them into two. Now we can go ahead and create our doorway with this, right? Well, not exactly. First, we need to split this brush again, and we're going to have three different brushes. Well, actually, we're going to have four, uh, but we're not going to get into that yet. But we're going to have three different wall brushes here. So we're just going to go ahead and split this again. It doesn't really matter where. We can resize it later. Uh, that's not a problem. Hit shift enter. And now you can see we have one, two, three different brushes, right? So we can go ahead and just delete this if you really wanted to and then put a room right here. But most of the time in maps, you won't see that because that looks weird with, with it just coming down like that, right? What you usually do is you create a lip coming down. So we're going to go ahead and do that. 
Uh, you don't have to, but it's just a map design thing that some people might want to do, and I'm going to show you guys how to do it. So you can just go ahead and hit Control tab and this will switch you to the side view. I'm going to hit X, and we're going to make a straight line. Hit Shift-Enter, and now we have that lip. Select the bottom piece, hit Backspace to delete it, and now we have a doorway, and we also have that little lip. Now, one problem we do have here is because of the way we set up the room in the first tutorial, we have a chalk texture on these sides. Now, if we go ahead and compile this map right now, assuming we had another room here, not just nothing, uh, they would be able to see through the, the walls because of the chalk texture. So we're going to go ahead and fix that real quick. So we're going to hit Control shift and we're going to select all of the sides like that. And we're going to retexture it. And the engine is smart enough to be able to tell what the texture was before it and it will line it up so that your you know your wood matches up um when it goes around the corner which is really nice so now we're going to go ahead and create our second room so how we're going to do that is we're just going to copy and paste the floor uh, that's a very easy way of doing it and we're going to avoid texture inconsistencies don't worry so i'm just going to drag this up here and create a separate room you can create a hallway just as easily but i'm just going to create a separate room here and it's about that big and uh make it a little bit bigger on this end um uh, let's make it a little bit uh, that's that's fine so there's our second room obviously this is going to be different for you because this is going to be um you know your map so it's not going to look like this um unless you're copying my map which is perfectly fine but one problem we have here is we have an outside brick texture on our walls when this is going to be another room, right? Because of how we set it up in the first tutorial. But then once again, we can just select these single sides. So we can go ahead and hit Control Shift, click these sides, and then retexture them. And as you can see, voila, we have the same inside texture in both rooms, and the brick texture is still on all of the outsides. Now, if we want to copy walls, we can just go ahead and hit Spacebar to uh, or shift click to select the brushes, and then we can just uh, hit spacebar to copy and paste them, right? W one thing I generally like to do is I like to select walls that are facing the same way. That way I don't have to rotate them, uh, which is really annoying. If you do have to rotate, you can just use this button right here. It's the Z with the arrow. Uh, but yeah, you, you don't, you shouldn't have to rotate them if you do my method, which is just selecting the brush that is facing the same way. And uh, that's what I do. So I'm just going to go ahead and resize these so that they fit the the walls. Um, I am going to rotate these because of the textures on them, just so that I don't have to retexture them. Um, okay, so let's see how that looks so far. Okay, so yeah, oh, I missed a corner here. These corners can be a little bit annoying. They're easy to miss. I'm just going to go ahead and change those. There we go. Now we can just extend this wall, really. Uh, we can just extend it out there. But then again, that's gonna extend the wall texture outside, and if you want your player to go outside, they're gonna see this, and they're gonna be a little bit you know, confused as to what's going on. So actually, I'm just gonna copy and paste that and create a new brush, uh, just in case you guys want that, just to show you a uh, better way of doing it. Okay, so now that we have that separate brush, we can just go ahead and paint that the brick texture there we go so we have our wall there i'm just going to copy and paste this bring it over here and place that in there it's perfectly and we're going to take this wall bring it over here and do, do, do. there we go and we're just going to paint that again the brick texture in case you want your characters go outside if you go if your characters don't go outside the map it's not a huge deal um but it is always good practice to make sure your textures make sense uh in the map you don't want outside textures inside and inside textures outside uh you know just general concepts of design so now when we're inside we have our inside textures and now when we're outside we have our outside textures it's beautiful and we have a different room here yay let's say we wanted to make this doorway a little bit bigger right let's say we wanted to make it so that uh well, it's just bigger, so we can just go ahead and resize this. And then we can take this and make it match up. And there we go. So the texture is still aligned and everything's all good. And we can go into the second room. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you guys may have on the video and subscribe. One thing that you may have a problem with, if you go ahead and copy your floor 
is you may have a texture inconsistency. Now for, you will see the line in the editor, even if you do do this, but what you're supposed to do is something with a floor when you're going through the doorway, select both floors and then repaint them with the same texture. And it should, across the brushes, paint the texture so that there's no cuts in the floor and the texture because that looks weird in game and that's very glitchy and weird and players don't generally like that. Uh, it doesn't really, the example wasn't well done on the floor. So if we go ahead and, um, you know, uh, well, this room needs a ceiling. So let's go ahead and give it a ceiling. Do resize it real quick. Okay, so we have a ceiling, but let's uh, delete this just for a quick, or move it just so I can show you guys the example here. As you can see, this is a very weird texture and consistency because it's a square pattern. And there's, there's something weird here, right? It's a very visible line. So if you go ahead and select both of them and repaint them, see how the, the pattern goes with it? So there is still a line here in the editor that won't be there in game, but the patterns line up and it makes, it's a lot better. Another way you can cover it up, uh, you should do this as well, but you could cover it up like this. So generally people are attracted to light in a map. So areas where there's more light, people were, will be more interested in naturally because of how the human brain works. So if you want to cover something up, like a crease in the floor that you can't seem to get rid of, just make sure that there's a shadow cast onto it from a light. And when there's an area of darkness there, not only is it going to be harder to see, but people aren't going to be attracted to that area because it's dark. They're going to be attracted to the light area down the room. So once again, I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Go ahead and check out my Facebook and Twitter page in the description below, and hopefully we can get that going. And I will see you guys tomorrow when I will probably be showing you guys how to do barriers uh, using the same cutting concept. The cutting concept can be a little bit untutored for first, and it's going to be very difficult to use. When I first used the cutting tool, I was awful at it. I was just making mistakes everywhere, cutting things weird, and didn't know how to confirm the changes. And it will take a little bit getting used to, kind of like the entire editor, in fact. The entire editor is kind of daunting, but once you start getting used to it, it can be your best friend and mapping can be a very fun thing to do. Uh, anyways, I will see you guys in the next video, and until then, peace.